Okay, how are we doing? Uh, so, Mel in the group has asked, after having numerous back catalogs of tracks, I finally finished off two which are now ready to pitch to labels. How do I go about doing this? I have zero idea. I want to do a few carousels with footage of day in the studios, etc. With my tracks running underneath and the video footage. Three labels I'd like to approach first. Uh, and you've listed them there. You've got Drum Code, you've got Filth and Acid. And uh, you got the other one which I haven't got a clue how to pronounce. Uh, it's one of those labels, I, I, I see the name everywhere, I've never said it out loud. Uh, any advice would be great. Uh, okay, sweet. So, first off, what we want to think about is, uh, why do we want to get on a label? So you've got tracks finished, but you've got to think, why, 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 what's the purpose of a label these days? Uh, when you can self-release, um, I'm not going to say to self-release, but when you can self-release, that used to be the function of a label. You'd give it to the label and they would uh, they, they would give you a route to market. But now you can do the route to market. And so you want to think carefully about what's the role of the label. Well, the role of the label is uh, they have a curated wheelhouse of artists. They have an audience that pay attention to those artists. And so if you go to a certain label, well, they bring their audience, don't they? They bring their, their fans, their eyeballs in their ear holes. Uh, they bring their network of artists that you know you can kind of unlock and, and, and will be more likely to play the music. Uh, they bring the attention of DJs, so you're more likely to get spun. Uh, they bring the attention of, uh, hopefully, press. Uh, the label can work to get it uh, with press, with, with in DJs' hands, can get it radio played. And it's kind of like a binary scale. If I hop into the iPad, uh, like let's say you have, uh, let's say this is the scale of labels, okay? And you have like the world's best. Now best is subjective, but you know in your head what I mean when I say world's best. It'll, it'll mean something different to everybody. Um, and let's just say uh, a, quiet label. I'm going to call it to be nice. There's lots of them. A label, you know, that's a small label, maybe a one man band, maybe there's one guy in the office or there's whatever. It's a small label, not a big audience. And so it's not a case that there's just two types of labels. There's like big labels and small labels, as people sometimes say. It's this scale. It's like, where on this scale does the label that you're releasing land? You know, is it a drum code where uh, the release is going to immediately people are just going to pay attention to the latest drum code release. DJs are going to pick it up. It's probably going to do all right in B port. Um, it's, you know, it's going to open some doors. A defected release, the exact same. It's, it's, it's going to do all right. It's not going to sit unnoticed. You're guaranteed just by the fact that it went out on that label that certain things are going to happen. Press are going to talk to you more easily. Radio are going to listen to it more likely. Now, if the track is absolute pony, then no label in the world can help you. It'll just be one of their dud tracks. Do you know what I mean? All, even the biggest labels in the world regularly have dud tracks that do nothing. So just because you get on the big label doesn't mean your track is going to do well. But by getting on the big label, you're opening up all those doors and audiences and you're making things a whole lot easier for you if the track is good. Whereas if we go to like a really quiet label, maybe they're not going to send it to any publicity. Maybe they got no list. Maybe nobody's paying attention. And so you could have the best track in the world, but it does nothing because nobody heard it and it just wasn't given a chance. And so every label will fall somewhere on the scale here, you know? And what you want to think about is, why are you going to the label that you're going? And so what I'm seeing when I, I drop those three big names, the minute I see somebody that wants to release their first release on drum code, I go, uh-oh, let's play a bit of a longer term game here. Like, let's definitely send it to drum code, absolutely. But let's think a little more about strategically what we want to do with our music. Drum code is one of those where Every techno artist coming out goes, I want, I want to be on drum code. And so drum code are getting sent millions and millions and bajillions and trillions of demos. And so they're able to pick from the best of the best. And actually, if you look at their wheelhouse, they kind of have a wheelhouse of artists that they're, they're, they're championing. And 
it may not be the, the place that you want to send your demo and hold it up while you wait to hear back from them and not sending it out to other people. Okay, so we want to think about uh, what label we want to send it to. And so let's say if it's a case that I want to get my music on drum code. Well, that's great. Okay, so drum codes in the middle. But around drum code in general, there are a raft of feeder labels, aren't there? Because if I'm uh, an artist that has released on drum code. Okay. I'll, I'll say uh, a DC artist. Well, it's probably true to say, unless I'm Adam Bear, Adam Bear uh, was the first release on drum code. But if you're uh, Leighton or if you're any any of the other drum code artists, you will have had a raft of other labels that you released on. And they were all feeder labels for drum code. You know, they all, they're in a similar wheelhouse. They're not like if we look at the hierarchy of labels, you know, there's always hidden hierarchies everywhere, whether it's in techno labels, the police force, monkeys in the jungle. If you pay attention, there's always a hierarchy. And so uh, when it comes to techno labels, drum code will be at the top. Uh, that techno label that your stoner mate set up from his bedroom, uh, like last year that never got any releases, well, it's here. You know, but it's on the hierarchy. Every label exists there. And so it's where on the hierarchy are you? And so there's there's the labels at the top. But is it really feasible with uh, no releases behind you, no back catalog, no momentum to just go straight in and start pitching these guys at the very, very top and have results? I mean, that's the stuff we all dream about. And sure, send it to them. But realistically there's all these levels of really credible feeder labels that the artists who have gone on to have success on drum code and filth on acid and all of those labels they've had to release on all these feeder labels first because in order to get on drum code you're on the labels below and you picked up attention and you got scooped up to drum code and before that, you're on another label and you got scooped up attention. So there's there's lots of other labels. And here's the thing. These labels can give you more care and attention. Because if you are a new artist with no following, no touring, nothing, and somehow you manage to get on drum code, you're not going to be the priority. You're, you know, they'll give the release some love, but it's 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 just not you're going to be much better off looking at some of the labels, let's say if that's tier one, tier two, tier three, tier four, I'd be, I'm one that says always shoot your shot. So send it to one. But like, if you look at labels on tier two and tier three, if you have got really good music, you're way better off trying to figure out, well, who are the labels in there that can get me on the ladder? That can get me on people's radar. They can actually listen to my music because they're not inundated with millions of tracks. They can actually come back, give me feedback, won't ghost me, get into conversation, and I can maybe look at sort of building a relationship with them, getting some feedback and getting something signed. And if you can build up a hit list of 20, 30, 40 labels worldwide that are like that, well, now you've got a good starting base that you can go into and you can you can try and get something signed. Now, the way we'll do that is we'll use our classic hit list strategy. So if you have the label. Are we trying to get signed with a label? No, we're trying to get signed with the A&R or if it's a, whoever in there has the yes. You know, if it's the label owner, maybe the label owner also works alongside the A&R and also has a say on music. It's always people think uh, I want to sign with drum code. But you actually never sign with drum code. You sign with Adam, isn't it? Adam signs off in it all. So it's always a human behind the label that you want to sign with. And so what we want to think about is if, uh, if you come up with these 20 or 30 labels that you think that you might want to target, who are the 20 or 30 humans? We want to go onto LinkedIn. We want to type in, let's say, if it's use drum code for the example, drum code. <laughs> Look at the people who are working in drum code. You'll see Adam Bear is listed as CEO or whatever. You'll use the Rocket Reach 
extension, you'll hit it, you'll get his email, and now you've got the direct email. So you can go direct. You can use some of the strategies that we teach within the program to sort of spark up a conversation, but you, you don't wanna be sending to demos at. If you're sending to demos at, especially at demos at drum code, here, look. See, I'm in the seventh story window here overlooking a park. I may as well take my USB whip my tracks on it. <laughs> Try and get the camera back where it was. I'll take the USB with the tracks on it and set fire to it and fuck it out the window because you have that much chance of, uh, like, if I set fire to a USB and throw it out the window from the seventh story, there's a chance, there is a chance that Adam Bear is walking underneath this window right here in Melbourne right now gets hit with it, manages to put it out, and is so intrigued that he puts it into his laptop and listens to it, there is a chance. <laughs> and there is the same chance of him going through all of the demos in the demos at drum code inbox and listening to them, okay? So if you're sending that over, uh, don't. So what you wanna do is you wanna find out who is the A&R at the label, go on to LinkedIn, find them, use Rocket Reach to find their direct email, and mail them directly, okay? Next thing you wanna do, uh, and I'm not gonna get into the, the, like the science of how to submit demos, just type, type that into YouTube, there's absolute loads of it, you can ask in the group and we'll, we'll help you on that. In general, send a private SoundCloud link, enable downloads, if they want to download it, let them, don't make the mail back going, hey, can you enable the download? So private SoundCloud link with downloads enabled, uh, and don't send it to lots of people. So don't send it to lots of people. Send it to um, one, like generate a new link for each label. If you send it to drum code and there's like 20 plays on it already, they don't care because other people have heard it. Also, this is why you don't make the social assets that you talked about. The, the reels and stuff with your tracks playing underneath and putting them out on socials, your music's already out there, basically. You know, keep it secret for now. Let's get it signed first, okay? Um, also, the other thing is don't send more than two tracks. Uh, you can send three absolute maximum, but I wouldn't, I would send two. Definitely don't send more than that. Uh, every single busy A&R that um, you, you've ever, you, you, I've ever seen interviewed has said, like if they open it and there's six tracks, seven tracks, f even four tracks or five tracks, it's, it's too much, it's too much. If they go into the first track and it's not great, at least if there's only one more track, they'll go and check it out. Send them your, your best stuff. But like if there's five tracks, they're gonna go, oh, like I'm not, I'm not going through this. It's as Wes from Defected said uh, in uh, an interview that I listened to last year with Graham Farmer, um, like if you send him a track and he doesn't like it, and then you send him another track straight away, He's going he's, to he's gonna be saying, well, hold on. Did you not send me your best stuff first time? How have you got another track so quickly? You should be sending me your best stuff. And so if you're sending me five tracks in a list and going, just pick whatever, you're not sending your best stuff. Send the killer. Uh, send one or two. Um, there's, 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 there's lots of other tips that you can include, but that, that stuff doesn't really matter. That's semantics and that'll change all the time. What you care about is the relationship building of the hit list. And so you wanna find out who the labels that you need to get in touch with are. Then you wanna find the people involved. Now here's the other thing that I would be doing. Let's say you've got your hit list, okay? Hit list, okay? This is your hit list. And let's say, just for making it easy for my drawing skills, you've only got five labels that you wanna get signed with. Make it more than that. You're saying that you've only got f three there and they're really big. So you're, you're setting yourself up to send your demos to and just have them held up for ages. Let, let's get this mu mu music moving. So I'm not saying send it to all 30, by the way, but I'm saying begin working the relationships with the 30 labels that are right for your sound. You know, start building relationships with these people. That's what the music is about anyway. It, it'll never hurt you. And so what we wanna be doing is, let's say label one, uh, if they're at IMS, let's say they're doing a pop-up, 
or if they're at ADE, they're having a Labour Party, or if they're at Brighton Music Conference, or wherever, any music conference, you want to be going, you want to be doing the demo drop, you want to be going up, saying to the A&R, hey, blah, blah, introducing yourself, shaking their hand. If they have a club night that's close to you, you want to mail the A&R and say, hey, I sent you some music, but I'd love to come down and just say hello. Pop down, say hello. You want to you wanna, uh, follow them on social. And you want to be in their comments all of the time. So they see your face. You want to be uh, playing the music in your sets. Okay, from the label. And then you want to be posting stories with your track lists. You know, so if you've got 10 tracks in a mix, you'll post 10 stories. Whenever the day your, your mix drops on SoundCloud, let's say, you're going to drop 10 stories. The first story is going to be a snippet of the first track. Second story is going to be a snippet of the second track. And so you've kind of got snippets of the 10 tracks promoting your mix. But on each story, you're going to tag the label, tag the artist. And the label and the artist get a little DM from Instagram in their inbox saying, this person has tagged you. Do you want to reshare? And you end up getting all of these big labels resharing your mixes. All of the people in here in the program have been doing this and getting, let's say you've 10 big artists on your mix or 10 labels on your mix, getting five of the labels sharing your mix with their music on it. This is a great way to get on their radar. It's a great way to get big labels, big artists sharing your music. But that's a great way for them to know you. All of this is like infiltration. Just, I've got this label, I'm circling the wagons. How can I infiltrate them? Because at the end of the day, how many great tracks have been released that never got heard? And so people have this idea in their head, if I can just create an amazing track, everything else will happen. And it's just not the case because first off, you gotta get it heard. And then you've gotta have them care enough about you to release it. And then once it's released, you've got to get other people to hear it. How many great tracks have actually been released that did fuck all? Because it didn't get the proper promo, wasn't released on the proper label. There's so many factors involved here that you need to set it up right. And so we need to be targeting good labels, um, realistic labels. You don't want to spend your life as a new artist just pitching drum code all the time because drum code more than likely aren't going to sign you. Um, and that's not to be a naysayer, pitch them, 100% pitch them. But they've only got so many release slots, their artist roster is already full, and they get pitched by a million people all of the time. So whilst we're pitching them, let's, let's keep making hay. Let's speak to the feeder labels, the labels that would still be amazing to get onto, but that we have a bit more of a chance of having a conversation with. And then we want to we want to do what, the same thing that we do with the bookings, have that group of people and then nurture them like this. We want to try and infiltrate them and do this. What we're doing here for number one, we do this for every label so that even if we're not getting signed with these 30 labels, we know the bookers. If we bump into them at conferences, we can say hello. They can introduce us to people. If we have a track that's hot, maybe it's not for them, but they'll recommend it. You've got a network of connected A&Rs and, 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 and label owners around you, making it way more likely that your music is going to get signed with the right labels, even if it's not theirs. And so we're using the power of relationships and the power of our hit list to build that Rolodex of, of, of influential A&Rs. And we're just, we're just going to keep at them, keep at them, keep at them, and keep making the music and keep hitting them with the music. Um, and then when we do pitch, we don't send it to all 30. We go, okay, this is right for that label. And we mail them and we let them know. We send them a love letter and we go, look, uh, I'm sending this to you because I want this out with you. Um, here's the link. Um, what, what do you think? You know, I've been, I've been on your radar for a while. I've been annoying you for a while. You don't have to say annoying, but... Uh, and then you see if, if they if they come back with feedback, take the feedback. Uh, if if it's not right for them, pass it on to the next label and do it like that one by one, sort of pitching it out all the time, generating a new SoundCloud link so that they see that they're the first person to listen to it. And then in the background, doing all of the stuff that we do, going out and getting yourself bookings so that you look like you got momentum behind you, 
doing all the right things on socials so you look like you're taking yourself seriously and you're 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 taking your music seriously and then producing 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 um this is by no means like this isn't a training this is an exhaustive uh answer um but it's if you do these things you will have success rather than just picking three labels and just setting it to those three labels where you might find your career gets held up and you feel like you're getting nowhere and you're spinning the wheels. Whereas the other way, we're building a bit of a strategy for ourselves. We're building a bit of a foundation where the bookings trickle upwards rather than us just trying to crack that big nut all the time. We are instead putting our irons in lots of fires and and on all of the right fires so that if even if just one catches for us, we're onto a winner and we can roll it from there. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, I'm off to get some breakfast. I'll uh, I'll speak to you soon.